Hi everyone, welcome. Welcome to some information about immunity and your health. I am just going to tag a few friends to invite them on if you don't mind for a second and um, we'll get going with what we're going to talk about this afternoon. And I have to kind of start out by sharing uh, kind of a funny story. Um, I mean, we're talking about stress, right? And um, I am um, sharing about um, ways to reduce stress, things that we need to think about when we're dealing with stress, and uh, pretty much um, how it also um, affects your immunity. So I'm a pretty healthy person, but I am not immune to stress. <laughs> um, and invariably, especially during these uh, still kind of somewhat COVID times, uh, when I plan um, my uh, Facebooks, uh, live events, it's like lockdown at my house, right? Well, sort of. <laughs> because invariably, um, the, the lawn guy shows up with blowers. The Navy starts um, flying airplanes. Um, let's see what else. Oh, the wind and the wind chime. Husband comes home. Daughter comes home for a late lunch and it's like, Mom. So, um, take a deep breath and join me for just a few minutes while we talk about stress and your immunity. So, I, I think all of us can certainly agree that we've been through extended stress and we never really knew what that felt like. We never really knew how many aspects of our lives were going to be changed that would cause stress. And by now we all know what they have been. But throughout this past year, last year with COVID, as I've said many times before, it's pretty much uncharted territory. And so we've learned a lot as we go. Thankfully, we live in a, a very sophisticated uh, time where we have research and science um, to really give us some history and to give us some current information. And what I've really tried to share a lot is that even in the beginning, we knew some very basic lifestyle choices that we all can make that will help us live healthy, whether or not it's COVID or unrelated to COVID. Those have not changed. In fact, as I read the research, we learn more and more going forward how important those simple things are. So I'm going to do two things today. I'm going to kind of give you a little reminder of what they are, but I'm going to share some information with you from Harvard Health that was published in February of 2021. So I'm talking very, very current research. And it is going to focus a little bit on this idea of stress and immunity and some things that we need to be doing to deal with that to stay healthy because um, we're still dealing with a lot of things and the carryover is still unknown. And we can't live in fear. We don't want to live in fear. Most, most everybody now is trying to break out from the fear. Um, but it's time to be proactively healthy. And you can't afford to wait until something is knocking on your door. In the old days, it might be just a scratchy throat or runny nose or runny eyes. In today's world, um, you have to be really proactive about it. You can't necessarily wait for symptoms. So if stress drags on for a long time, we know from the science that it makes you more vulnerable to illness from the simple things like I've just described to more serious things. And we all can relate because it just seems like as if COVID-19 wasn't enough, there was everything else going on in the world too. So chronic stress exposes your body to a steady stream of stress hormones that suppress the immune system. One of the first things they talk about is loneliness and isolation can affect your immune system. Uh, hello, lockdown, pandemic, 
we know that having strong relationships and a good social network is really good for you. We need to feel connected um, to a, a few close friends or even a group. And if some of you are getting out now, maybe having lunch and dinner and maybe activities with family members, um, it's like a breath of fresh air. But there are many other things that also affect your health and your immunity. That's one thing, but back to the basics, we know that what you eat also has an effect on your immune system. All the nutrients in your foods directly affect how everything's going to function in your immune system. So, um, well, according to this information, not one single food can up. in two ways. The higher temperature in the body speeds up the functioning of cells. I never knew that. I didn't really know what it was. I knew somehow that my body was fighting it, but that's what it's fighting. It really is speeding up how your blood cells attack the infection or, or, or what is attacking your body. They can respond to invading germs faster. A higher body temperature makes it harder for bacteria and viruses to thrive in the body. So, well, I, I miss learning a lot. But here's the caveat. If you repeatedly feel anxious and stressed, and that lasts a long time, your body never gets that signal to return to its normal function. And this can weaken your immune system leaving you even more vulnerable to viral in infections and frequent illnesses. Okay, here's another one that was kind of news to me. I mean, I understand fasting in a different way, but fasting as it, as it relates to your immune system, um, prolonged fasting forces the body to use stores of glucose and fat and also breaks down a significant portion of white blood cells. During each cycle of fasting, the depletion of your white blood cells induces a change that triggers a stem cell-based regenerative system in your immune system. Wow, um, really cool stuff. I mean, I'm trying to keep it basic, but here's the Harvard information that you're really gonna love. What can you do to boost your immune system? Well, there's a lot of theory out there but your immune system is actually um, a system and it functions at different levels and it requires balance and harmony. And there's still a lot that we're just beginning to learn about it, but we do know that diet, exercise, psychological stress, and other factors affect the immune system. So in the meantime, we need to make sure that we're adapting these healthy strategies. So the first line of defense for your immune system is to have a healthy lifestyle. And it's all the basics that we always talk about. No smoking, uh, no excessive alcohol, a diet high in fruit, exercise, healthy weight, um, and good sleep. And guess what? Avoiding infections by washing your hands. So, so some of the things that, that when we first started adapting were maybe a little foreign to us, but now we're understanding this big picture. So 
here's another little thing to remember. As we age, our immune system capabilities become reduced, which in turn contributes to more infection and some very serious diseases. Now, there's a lot of studies on people that are very advanced in ages, but we know that their immune system begins to become compromised, and they are the ones that are threatened with respiratory infections, flu, COVID-19, pneumonia, all the things that we've been so focused on in this last year. But there is a correlation that I hope that you can learn a little bit more about. Some scientists have observed that the increased risk correlates with something that we call a decrease in T cells. Now that's a very specific measurement and not a lot of people talking about it, but tuck it in the back of your mind. Back to the diet again, but here's what I really want to share with you that's pretty much the heart of this article. Back to this thing of stress and your immune function. There's more and more evidence now of the relationship between the mind and the body. Lots of things that we don't even think about. Now, I've been studying this for a little while, and even things like rashes on your skin that get more advanced, like psoriasis, those kinds of things, even stomach upsets and even heart disease can be affected um, by this emotional stress. So we're, we're, we're continuing to study this relationship between stress and the immune um, function. But here's another um, difficulty in defining this stress factor. What is stress for you? Is it the same as it is for me? Possibly not. Uh, there are those, and I know some, who have a much higher level of tolerance. And they're, they're really not um, feeling those stressors as quickly as someone else. So it's very difficult to quantify this. But the scientists can only measure things that we see in the body that, that reflect that stress, such as our heart rate um, and, and a, another, some of these other factors that I mentioned before, like T cells and white cells, things like that. But most scientists studying the relationship of stress and the immune function do not study the short-lived stressors. What they're really looking at, hello, COVID wake up, are long-term stressors, constant and frequent, that we see caused by family, friends, coworkers, or sustained challenges to perform well at one's work. We're continuing to investigate this, but you can't read this information and not think, what in the world have we just been through and what do we need to do now? Um, like I said in the very beginning, I'm a pretty healthy person. I'm very blessed. Um, there are some habits that I've had my whole entire life that I didn't understand um, the, the long-term benefit of until I'm long-term, which I am. But I think it's important to remind everyone um, that these we know now, especially in light of more and more of this devastating experience, how important these things are. And many of them are very simple things that should be a part of lifestyle. So I um, thank you for joining me. I want you to share this information. Um, some of it is so simple, but yet it's so critical. And as we go through this situation and as we go forward, um, we can't stop thinking about it. Um, I, I share my Facebook Lives on my YouTube channel under my name. And you can always message me and uh, comment or ask me about my research. Um, I never come on here without it. So I'm happy to share that with you. Also, I do want to um, let you know that this evening I'm doing a Zoom at 8 o'clock. And I'll be doing that with... Um, a friend, a business associate who's been practicing medicine for about 30 years, and we're going to talk about proactive immunity. And uh, she's been seeing patients throughout COVID, and most of her practice in these last few months has been po uh, pretty much focused on uh, 
treating post-COVID patients and trying to get them back to uh, my healthy lifestyle. So that's only about 30 minutes. Um, I've already posted it on my pages and on my customer page and so on and so forth. So if you want um, more information on that, I can send you a Zoom link out on that uh, as well. But we're going to dig a little deeper. We're going to talk about what those systems I mentioned, were, what those systems really are, and what you can do, what you can do very easily to address those systems. And as I said before, you're going to hear some things that you might have heard throughout um, this last uh, little over a year, and they're really becoming more and more familiar to you and more and more critical. So thanks for joining me, guys. I really appreciate it. I feel less stress already because I shared it with you. And I'll see you hopefully tonight at 8 o'clock. Thanks.